Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about shrimp. And in specific, we're gonna be talking about the seven tips for keeping shrimp in an aquarium. Now, I have made this video in the past and it is actually the most successful video on this channel. So that video got over 400,000 views, which is kind of crazy to think about. And I thought, you know what? I might as well make another one of these videos again because it's very relaxing to watch. Super good to just have some shrimp swimming around and talking about some tips and things that I've learned over the past couple of years of keeping shrimp. So I first got shrimp when I was 15, I think, and maybe I was 14 and now I'm 20. So I've been keeping shrimp for a bit. I actually did take a break from keeping shrimp for about two years in a period of time there. And um, now I'm back into it. I've got some shrimp. I've got four types of shrimp. So I've got a mix of caradinas and neocaradinas, which are two different types of shrimp that we're going to be talking about in this video. But I've got some blue dreams. I've got some crystal reds, which are a caradina. I've got some yellow cherries. I've got some red cherries. And um, yeah, so we'll be doing a bunch of B-roll of those guys and just talking about some tips. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start off by coming over to this tank which has my colony of blue dreams in here. Now there's a bunch of buried females in here, which is very exciting. And for all you guys who don't know, a buried female is basically when a female is pregnant. She's got her eggs behind her. I don't know what that's called behind her. Um, she's got those in her like flaps, <laughs> which sounds very weird. And yeah, this colony is doing very, very good in this tank. These guys are a neocaradina, so they're distantly related to the red cherry shrimp, which is probably the most common shrimp in the entire hobby. And um, a lot of people start off there. So these guys are a neocaradina shrimp, which makes them say a little bit more hardy than a caradina shrimp. But I guess the first tip is gonna to be to keep one type of shrimp per tank. And this is gonna be for a bunch of different reasons. And the main reason being just for your sake, because shrimp are very, very easy to breed once you get them into the right habitat and right environment. And once they're in stable water parameters, they'll start breeding. You'll have a bunch of buried females like I've got in this tank and you're gonna have a massive population explosion, which is great because it means that you can start to capitalize on that. So you can actually start to sell your shrimp to shops you can sell them on craigslist or gumtree here in australia and lots of people are going to be in demand for those shrimp but if you don't have like a certain strain of shrimp so you don't have your blue dreams or your yellow cherries and you just have like a mix of say a few yellow ones a few blue ones and a few red ones what will end up happening is if they are both neocaradina shrimp or the same goes for caradina shrimp what will end up happening is those guys will interbreed and they'll cross and you'll have a bunch of weird mutations and what you'll have happen is a bunch of those colors will just end up mixing creating brown shrimp which is not really desirable for a lot of people and something that a lot of people aren't really into so maybe there's going to be a few people that want to buy i don't know what you'd call them chocolate shrimp or something like that but for the most part a lot of people will just call those mutt shrimp and they're going to be used as feeders if someone's going to buy them so for your sake it's good to keep just one type of shrimp per tank I mean, a lot of people are gonna to wanna to mix shrimp together and have like blues and yellows and reds together and stuff like that. And that's fine, you can go and do that. Just know that eventually those colonies are gonna turn into brown shrimp and um, that's not the best thing. And a lot of people don't realize that that's gonna happen. So just be aware of that. That's the first tip is to keep one type of shrimp per tank. You can keep neocaradinas and caradinas together, but both of them have kind of a little bit of a different water parameter and water parameter needs. So they're pretty similar. You can do it, a lot of people do it. But um, I'd kind of recommend just to keep one type of shrimp per tank for your sake. Also, just like if you're going to catch them out and net them, you're going to be catching out the same thing every time instead of having to like, you know, catch out the individual red ones and the crystals. And you guys kind of get what I mean. So that's the first tip. Keep one type of shrimp per tank. Okay. And so for the next tip, we're going to come over to my crystal tank. So these guys are my crystal red shrimp. I think I've got about nine of these guys in here. Maybe I've got a few more now. I haven't seen any babies in here because these guys have only been in the fish room for about three weeks. Same goes for all the shrimp, so I'm really surprised that those blue dreams were breeding before. But um, these guys are caradina shrimp, so I'm talking about caradina shrimp and neocaradina shrimp. There's two different types of shrimp in the hobby, like I was saying, and these guys are the caradinas, so they're a part of a different family. They won't breed with the neocaradinas, so you don't have to worry about that. But um, I guess that brings us to our second tip, and the second tip is going to be to keep really stable water parameters. Now, I can't stress this tip enough. This is very, very important with shrimp. Shrimp are probably one of the most sensitive species in the entire hobby, and like they're not as resilient as a lot of the fish that we keep like even discus and things like that seem to be a lot more flexible with water parameters and things like that these guys just can become so stressed and really fragile when it comes to changing of water parameters and fluctuations so what i recommend to combat this and to keep a really really stable aquarium 
is first of all to add live plants because we're going to talk about live plants later on in the video but live plants really do help to stable out an aquarium and make it so that there's no ammonia and nitrates and nitrite build up in that tank because the plants help to use those you know chemicals and things like that to actually grow and they really do provide a lot of space as well for those beneficial bacteria that help with that nitrogen cycle in the aquarium so we don't have to get into the science of that just add some live plants to the aquarium that can really help to keep it stable and the second thing i'm going to talk about is to use certain types of shrimp substrates so a lot of shrimp substrates actually have like a buffer in them and what they're going to do is without you having to worry about the science and things like that they're going to make it really simple just buy the shrimp substrate put it down the bottom of the aquarium follow the instructions and add your tap water and those shrimp substrates can last for a couple of years and really help to provide a stable environment for those shrimp so that when you do a water change and things like that you don't have crazy fluctuations and things like that and another little handy tip that kind of comes under this umbrella of keeping stable water parameters is to acclimate your shrimp properly so acclimating shrimp is when you introduce new shrimp to an aquarium you really want to do that over a long period of time very very slowly because when you buy shrimp they could come from water that's got like i don't know a different ph and a different gh and kh and all that kind of stuff to your water so what I'd recommend doing is a drip acclimation. Go and do your own research on that. But um, that's another really handy little tip that I've got for keeping really stable water parameters. These guys can be very easy and simple and rewarding to take care of. But keeping those stable water parameters is like 100% the key to having success with shrimp. Okay, and so for tip number three, we're going to come over to the yellow cherry shrimp tank. And these guys are a neocaridina. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. These guys have just been not doing that well in this tank and I don't know what the reasons are maybe this is a bad strain maybe I'm doing something wrong but um these guys just haven't been doing that great in this tank I started with 20 and at the moment I think I have about eight or nine of them in here so I'm not too sure what's happening and that just shows that I do make mistakes as well so we're going to be getting a few more and possibly moving this colony to another tank maybe with some different water parameters but I guess that brings us to our third tip and the third tip is going to be to keep the pH below 7.6 what that means is basically just keep the water slightly acidic now shrimp in general just really do enjoy slightly acidic water these guys apparently come from little tiny streams and rivers I don't know where in the world but in those tiny streams and rivers there's just tons of leaf litter down the bottom and that creates a slightly acidic environment for these guys to be in so keep that pH below 7.6 Keep in mind, do your own research and find out which shrimp require what pH and what kind of substrate you want to get and how you want to keep that pH. But um, most of the time, just adding some shrimp substrate is really going to help to keep that pH stable. And um, every now and then adding some leaf litter and things like that is also going to be very beneficial. But we'll talk about that later on in the video. But I guess, yeah, tip number three, pretty self-explanatory, is just to keep that pH below 7.6. I probably wouldn't go below a 6.5 or 6.6. .6. Just keep it in that range. I reckon the, the happy medium is kind of like 6.8 for caradinas. And then for cherries, it's probably like 7.2 to 7.6 and you'll just be flying. Okay, and so for tip number four, we're gonna come over to this red cherry shrimp tank, which is a very new tank and has only just been recently set up with these new red cherries. But tip number four is gonna to be to keep planaria away. So this is a really important tip, something I didn't realize up until recently. Planaria doesn't seem to be a huge problem for a lot of people just because I haven't heard about it. So maybe it is, I just could be living under a rock. But um, there's certain types of planaria which are actually parasitic, or parasitic might not be the right word, basically can kill shrimp. So planaria comes from overfeeding, it comes on plants when you buy new plants and things like that. And it can just cause a lot of problems. I think from what I remember, it kind of like gets into the shrimp and then just kills the shrimp that way. So it's not too good. I'm not an expert at planaria. All I know is to keep that stuff away. So what I'd recommend doing is to try and prevent overfeeding. First of all, that's probably the first thing I'd do. The second thing is that I'd try and quarantine new plants and things like that that come into that tank and try and make sure you don't infect that tank where planaria could come in. And the third thing is kind of just to like do a treatment on that tank if you do spot any planaria. So be on the lookout, you'll see it. I'll put up some photos in this video and you can see some of the photos of planaria and what it looks like. It'll be going along your glass, you can see it on the substrate. You'll see it when there's food around. So just keep your eye out. If you see it, try and get rid of it. You can use certain like medications, which I tend to use. So I use a medication called no planaria. It's a little bit hard to find here in Australia, but you can find it probably a little bit easier over in the States and places like that. You can use planaria traps. I haven't tried that, but a lot of people have success with that. So I guess there's not a lot I can talk about with this. Try and keep it away. I wouldn't be too scared of it because it's not like going to kill a shrimp completely overnight. It's something you might lose one or two shrimp, but um, as long as you're paying attention to it and trying to keep it away, once you set up a tank, if you're never going to add new plants to it and you're just going to watch it grow, 
and you don't ever notice planaria, then normally you're sweet. So tip number four, keep planaria away. It's definitely going to be very, very useful, especially with those expensive carotene shrimp. Okay, and so for tip number five, we're going to come over to my blue dream tank again, and we're going to start talking about something that I'm actually very excited to talk about and something that I think is going to make a huge difference to your enjoyment with shrimp. And this is going to be to add leaf litter to your tank. So I wouldn't just go out and add any leaf litter. Some leaves are actually lethal to shrimp and some leaves are actually very, very good for shrimp. So like I was saying before, shrimp come from those streams. I don't know where in the world they come from. I'm probably going to find it out and put it up in the video. And in those streams, there's obviously a ton of leaf litter. And these guys are, I think you'd call them like detritivores. I'm not too sure. I'll find that one out as well. These guys eat tons of that leaf litter and that's actually a main part of their diet out in the wild. And adding leaf litter is really, really good because it provides a constant food source. Leaf litter normally also, when you add it to the aquarium and it sinks down to the substrate of the aquarium and starts to degrade, it actually forms something called biofilm on it. And that biofilm is just amazing for a bunch of different fish and shrimp. It provides a bunch of really good bacteria and food sources for those shrimp. And it just does absolute wonders, especially when I'm breeding plecos, I add leaves and stuff like that to the tanks where the fry are and the fry eat it and it really gets their guts going so it's just an amazing food source for those guys to have and it also helps to slightly bring down that ph and add a little bit of acidity into the water through the tannins so what i recommend and i guess some of those types of leaves that i like to use in my tanks is first of all my favorite type of leaf to use is mulberry leaves so these are just leaves that i can collect nearby actually my mate justin i'm gonna link up his channel up above he does a lot of leaf collecting and we use quite a lot of his leaves here at keeping fish simple we like to use those mulberry leaves they work really really well they don't last too long in the tank maybe a couple of days and the shrimp really eat through them but they just the shrimp seem to love them a lot second on the list would be indian almond leaves which i actually sell on my website so you can go check that down below you can get yourself some indian almond leaves you can also get them across any place in the world lots of places sell indian almond leaves they're a very very common one to use they last a lot longer and they also release a lot of tannin into the water so you'll actually notice if you add like an indian almond leaf to your small nano tank it'll really murky up the water and add a lot of acidity to it so just be careful with that don't add like a crazy amount of them you can almost add as many mulberry leaves as you want but with those indian almonds just be a little bit more careful and then third would be banana leaves so a lot of people like to use banana leaves and i actually use banana leaves myself Banana leaves, the shrimp don't seem to like them as much. They eat them, but they just take a long time to like come down and biodegrade. And one thing I've noticed about banana leaves is they don't release a lot of tannin, but they do release a lot of acid into the water. So if you're trying to bring that pH down, banana leaves are really, really good. And then fourth on the list is just one that I like to use because it's close to me and something that's free and I can get like pretty much infinite of. And this is eucalyptus leaves. So apparently flowering gums are really good. I like to just use like, I think, just normal eucalyptus leaves. Do some research if you can, but most of the eucalyptus leaves that you find will be fine. Obviously not everyone can get those, but the shrimp seem to eat them. They last a very, very, very long time in the aquarium. They take a long time to break down, but once they start to break down, the shrimp go crazy for them. So that's tip number five, add some leaf litter to the tank. I think every shrimp tank should have some leaf litter in it. And it just really just help the shrimp out. The shrimp love it. They eat it, the baby shrimp can eat it. And yeah, it just really works really well. Okay, and so tip number six is going to be pertaining to plants, like I was talking about earlier on in the video, and this is to add some plants to your tank. So plants, like I was talking about earlier on, I'll go into a bit more depth in it now, but um, plants just really, I recommend them for pretty much any freshwater aquarium if you can. So plants don't work well, obviously, with big monster fish because the monster fish eat them, but these little nano species of shrimp and little nano species of fish and even community fish, just plants just go so good with them. There's certain types of plants which I'd recommend, and I'm going to tell you guys those plants in a sec, but plants just help to balance out the ecosystem. They actually turn an aquarium into an ecosystem. Like if you look at it in the wild, fish produce waste. That waste falls down to the bottom of the aquarium or the river or whatever. It gets broken down and then it turns into nitrites and then nitrates where it's turned into ammonia. And the plants love to use the ammonia and the nitrites and the nitrates and all that kind of stuff just to grow. And it just really it works wonders. Like plants just honestly help to balance out an aquarium so much. And it takes a lot of the weight off your shoulders on doing water changes and all that kind of stuff. So definitely add plants to your aquarium. Some of the plants I'd recommend, first of all, would be Java moss, that's kind of the classic one. A lot of people love to add Java moss to their tanks, so Java moss is also available down below if you want to go check it out. Just add a little ball of that stuff. It doesn't grow the quickest, but it will grow over time and provide this huge, beautiful jungle for these guys to go into. Second on my list would be guppy grass. Guppy grass is really, really good. It kind of doesn't look the same as Java moss. It'll grow a little bit quicker and it does a better job of getting the ammonia and nitrates out. And actually, I think 
works a little bit better than Javamos. Javamos, you get the benefits because it's got those little nooks and crannies. It's going to have heaps of those little like microorganisms and things for the shrimp to pick out and eat. You won't get that with the guppy grass, but the guppy grass grows quicker and it's going to use up those ammonia and nitrates faster. Keep in mind, shrimp don't create a lot of ammonia and nitrates, and if you have ammonia and nitrates in your aquarium, it's probably due to overfeeding. And then my third plant would be a plant called Cambomba, which I'm very new to, but this plant is just amazing. It grows super quick, it's very similar to guppy grass, and it's just another great plant to add to your tank. But um, you guys, if you want to go see some of the best beginner plants, I'm going to put a link up in the top right hand corner to a video where you can go and find some amazing plants to add to your tank if you're a beginner. And that brings us to our final tip, tip number seven. And this tip is gonna be about the water flow in your aquarium. And this is gonna to be to keep these guys in low flow. You don't wanna add them to a tank with a bunch of flow where they're gonna get beaten around and they're not gonna be able to like relax and just sit down and eat and you know do all the things that shrimp do. You wanna add them to a tank where there's very, very low flow. What I would recommend is just adding a sponge filter. I wouldn't have like a huge canister filter in your tank or even like a big overflow filter. I find those things don't work. These guys, because they create such a small amount of waste, you really don't need a lot of filter space and just a small little sponge filter is really going to do wonders in that tank. So a sponge filter is just going to create a little bit of flow in the tank to help with oxygenation, which isn't that important with shrimp, but if you've got some nano species of fish in there, it's going to be really, really good. And yeah, a sponge filter is just probably the best way to go with shrimp because they're not going to get sucked into it and their babies aren't going to get sucked into it. And because it's a sponge, a lot of the shrimp are actually going to go onto that sponge and eat any of the things that the sponge filter is sucking up and uh, actually pick food off of that sponge filter. So it's kind of like really the perfect thing to use in a shrimp tank is a sponge filter if you guys are interested there's sponge filters down below as well and that's what i'd recommend adding just keep them in low flow keep in mind they don't come from like really fast flowing rivers they come from little streams and puddles and things like that so having them in with like a canister filter or something that's beating them up and beating them around is just not going to benefit them and it's going to stress them out and in general it isn't going to be that good but i guess that kind of wraps this video up guys thank you so much for watching it i really do appreciate it if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like down below because it really helps this video to do better if you guys are enjoying some of the videos you've been watching on this channel please consider subscribing but i guess that brings us to the end of the video so thank you so much for watching it and i'll see you guys in the next one